never ever find the right words And there's no way this is real life There's no telling you well, what's up guys? Welcome back to Welcome back to another video and today I'm in the garage. It's completely empty for your boy I'm actually haven't been filming at the shop because my allergies have been so bad Like I actually can't even breathe at the shop for some reason So it's making me reevaluate a lot of things, but anywho it doesn't stop us from making the best content on YouTube So let's go ahead and get the 535 in here I reached out to burger tuning and we got a JB4 for this car now You guys know that my 435 is also an N55. I have both the F535 and the 435. They're both N55 Hard. Currently right now the 435 is running boot mode 3 and we're about to put a JB4 on the 535 I've seen a lot of my friends have JB4s on the N54s And I really 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 wanted to give it a shot on an N55 and see the complete comparison since they have the exact same motors I'm not gonna be comparing it in this video, but for this car. I want to try a JB4. I'm super stoked for it I even got the adapter to where you can connect it to your phone So you don't need a laptop or anything and you don't need to play on the dash You can literally control everything from your phone and have gauges on your phone I'm super stoked for that part and before we actually get into that I actually found a JB4 in my room I don't know you know what car this belongs to either an N54 or N55 I think it's probably N55 but I think, I don't know, I'm pretty sure, I'm, it could have came from my 435 or it could have been my for my N54. So regardless, it's one or the other. And I'm going to be giving this away to one of you guys. All you have to do if you guys want to support the build is cop a crate down below. You guys' names will be shout out in the next video. And everyone that cops a crate is going to be featured on the F10 plaque in the shop. And I'm actually going to be getting all those plaques. I might be bringing them back here in the garage. I'm going to be filming a lot more in here at home just because of the weather. For everyone that purchases a crate just today, we'll have a chance of opening up their package of Possibly seeing a JB4, so that's pretty exciting. I figured I might as well give it away in this video since we're actually doing a JB4 on the, on the 535. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get the 535 in here. Alright guys, so now that we're in the engine bay, let me show you guys what we have in the trunk. I've been so excited to announce this. Even the box looks absolutely amazing. This is exactly for my car. You have to make sure you get the right one. So make sure you guys look on their website and follow the instructions. Make sure you guys get the right JB4. So this is what we have in the kit. I went ahead and ordered this as well, which is a, basically a Bluetooth adapter. So it allowed me to use my phone wirelessly with the JB4, which is super sick. And then we also have the JB4. I actually put this sticker with the giveaway JB4. So again guys, don't forget to cop your crates. And here here is the full harness to the JB4 for this 535. This is going to be pretty damn exciting. This looks so beautiful. Like, oh my God. And also, guys, just want to put it out there for those of you guys who are unfamiliar with JB4. From what I've heard, it's very easy to install. So we're about to go ahead and install it. I'll let you guys know from an honest level from 0 to 10 how easy it is to install. And also the reason why you should get a JB4 over any other tune. And that's the fact that, you know, it, it's an actual module. Like, you basically can plug it in. Do your mods, do whatever you want to do. Let's just say your car is leased, for example. You can literally remove the JB4 and there is no trace that the car was ever modified. Unlike other tunes that actually leave traces that the tune was previously there or you have to clear everything entirely and it just looks fishy when you take it down to BMW to get your car worked on. So if you, so this is especially perfect for anyone that has a leased car because you could just take it right off and no one needs to know. That's pretty crazy. All right, first things first is go ahead and move everything over here. Oh my god guys, I love the quality of these products. It looks so good. I literally feel like I'm a kid from Christmas. This is pretty dang exciting. So we're gonna have to remove this trunk thing because we're gonna have to disconnect the battery. Better safe than sorry. We don't want to mess up our car. Let's go ahead and just disconnect the battery real quick. And all I did is loosen up that 10 millimeter and pulled the negative out. Now that you have no power to the car, make sure you don't close the trunk. It's to grab a flathead and just lock it. It will not close so that's what's super nice about it So make sure you guys do that just go ahead and lock that and once you connect the battery and unlock the trunk That will release again and you can close your truck just a better safer way You could also tie a towel around here, but I don't like ruining my nice towel So I think this is the easiest method now if you didn't order this kit you would come with a wired system I went ahead and ordered the wireless so Let's go ahead and take apart this JB4 and install the wireless car to it So as soon as we have all this connected we'll have Bluetooth connection All right guys, so first things first we're gonna move the JB4 over here. Let's go ahead and remove these four screws real quick Wow, that was really easy to take apart. Guys, and this is made of such nice quality. So the next thing you wanna do here is just go ahead and get to the wireless kit, pull it out. First things first, we're gonna go ahead and plug this in. And with the two screws that comes in the package, I would definitely hand tighten these. But I'm a crazy son of a gun, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, use a drill. And it doesn't need to be that tight. It just needs to be in there enough to where the module doesn't just come out easily. Put back the housing, just like that. 
Just gonna put in the new screws. Now we have all four screws tightened up. We have the wireless adapters sticking out, looking all beautiful and stuff. In the day and age that things are digital, it's just also nice having things that are physical because you actually feel your money. You feel where it's going. And quality is something they did not cheap out on. This looks so sick. All right, let's go ahead and start installing it. Also, I'd just like to take a second and admire how cute this little bag is. All right, guys, first things first, just go ahead and remove this engine cover. Should just pretty much come right on out. Next step, we're gonna have to remove this guy. So in order to do that, all you have to do is remove a tab that's here and a tab that's here, which just looks like this. So you just pull the top portion out and you can just pull the whole thing out, both clips. And then this whole thing just comes right on out. So this next step, guys, you guys can see, I'm gonna leave the module right here because it's gonna be going into there somewhere. This is gonna be a ground which we'll be installing pretty soon. And this is gonna be routed inside the car. So we're gonna go ahead and leave that over there as well. So we just have one harness wire right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do an extra step which is just pretty much making it super clean. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this side piece which you don't need to do. You can just pretty much route the wires over underneath this little trim piece, underneath the molding and just route all your wires. I want it to be super clean. So I'm gonna go ahead and just remove this and just put the JB4 in there and route the wires out of here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that real quick. This is not a necessary step but I just want my wires to look super clean. Guys, and now that I have the wire routed through here, it's pretty much a little garment where the rest of the wiring harness is. I pretty much routed through the exact same area for an OEM look. I went ahead and put this back. So now that we have the wires pretty much coming out of here instead of just going on top, it's all that I did. So the first thing I'm gonna be plugging in is the T-MAP sensor. And this actually goes right down here. This sensor right here, I don't know if you guys can see it, that's where we're gonna be plugging in. So this male head is gonna be plugged into the harness, the female head. And then this male head will be going into the actual sensor itself. So uh, I'll show you guys how that looks in a little bit. All right guys, so look at it right here. So I have the cable that's coming out of the car into the harness and the other piece of the harness is actually going into the actual sensor of the car. So, so that part is actually very easy to do. The next sensor we're gonna be plugging in is the map sensor. So the map sensor is actually right underneath the intake. I don't know if you guys can see it right there. So that sensor right there is the map. It looks pretty much identical to the one just we did down there, but the rainbow cable is for that one and this one is for the one right behind the intake. So we're just gonna go ahead and do that real quick. The next thing you gotta do is go ahead and connect the fuel pressure sensor. So we're gonna have to remove the intake and it's actually very easy. Just one screw up there, just unplug the sensor and the whole thing just comes out. So you got, this is the only screw that you gotta do right here. Unplug the sensor, just pull up on the box. Should be a pretty easy procedure. So just to remind you guys, you guys don't need to plug in the fuel sensor one if you guys don't pl plan on running E85. So I'm gonna be plugging it in for the sake of the video. I'm not too sure if I'm gonna be running E85 yet, but it doesn't hurt It doesn't hurt to have it hooked up so I can just check all my settings through the JB4, which is gonna be nice anyways. So to do that, all you have to do is remove that intake there and then just pretty much move this rubber piece out of the way and it's gonna expose those three bolts. I believe they're T25s, remove those three bolts and then this thing just comes right on up. You can remove the rest of, the, the rest of this little rubber thing here and and the sensor is literally right on the back. So once you've gotten the three screws out on this side, on this side right here, there's two more screws. You could just try to pop this out. I really don't know how to. So instead of breaking, I'm just gonna remove those two screws. It makes life easy. And then once you have the two screws out on this side, three screws out on this side, you can pull this whole thing out of the way. And now you can see the sensor, which is right back here. The sensor is right here in the end of the fuel line. So unplug that and just pretty much do the same thing you did with the other two. And guys, since my car is a Pinomatic, I don't actually need this. So I can just literally just tuck it down there. It doesn't matter. We have everything else hooked up. We're just gonna go ahead and put the intake back in and uh, just go ahead and start working on the inside of the cabin. Now that we're done with everything in the engine bay, now what we have is this ground wire, which we're actually not gonna be dealing with. We're gonna be trying to mess with this right now and then we're actually gonna mount the GB4. So what connects to this side is actually the OBD cable. So there's two ways of doing it. You can literally just connect it and uh, tuck it underneath the fender and just get it straight through there and connect it to your OBD. And uh, since it's such a thin wire, you can close your door, no water will come inside the car. It'll work just fine. That is uh, pretty much the easy way to do it. And then if, there's a, if you guys wanna do it the clean way, we're actually gonna go straight through the firewall, which is the way I'm gonna be doing it because I want this thing to look super clean and OEM. So what we're gonna have to do is go ahead and remove this bottom tread. I pretty much removed four screws. That's all that's holding it down. So literally there's one right here. 
second one right there, and then pretty much the same way on the other side. And I'm pretty sure everything just starts coming apart now. So we can go ahead and just remove this, uh, which actually has the airbag. Oof, that's kind of scary. So luckily we disconnected the battery. You see, that is a big deal, guys. We're gonna go ahead and use a flathead to pop this sucker out. Once you pull out the airbag, this thing is just pretty much tabs. One down, one down, and we actually have that piece. Start finessing this out. So once you remove this, I'm pretty much routing the cable straight in there. It goes straight into the cabin. I'm just gonna go ahead and put the rest of this in there. I don't really need any of it really out here. At this point, it's not going in anymore. So let's go ahead and go inside the cabin and try to find that wire, pull it down. And then all we have to do is just connect this to the OBD. And that is literally one of the last steps before just giving it power. And now that we have the wire through, we can just go ahead and connect it to the OBD. And I'm actually not gonna untangle this. I'm gonna leave it like that, just mainly because we don't need that much distance anyway. The wire is already out here. Now that we have this piece connected, all we gotta do is just push everything back in and plug in the OBD. All right guys, at this point, we have the wire connected. So we just go ahead and plug into the OBD. Everything's back together. Now that is how you saw a JB4, boys. Oh, nearly forgot, guys. We're gonna have to connect this negative cable. And actually, I want to mount this a little bit further this way. So I need to pull this more, but it's pretty much maxed out here. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this bolt, get this wire over, and actually just might as well, when I tighten up the bolt, put in the negative right underneath there, and bam. <laughs> We have the negative wire right here. It's not going anywhere. Pretty much routed it down here. Now, all we have to do is pretty much just mount the JB4 the way we like it. So let me go figure out a, like, a nice way to flex that JB4 because that is a flex. Go ahead and mount the JB4. It's not moving anywhere. Plus, I have the little JB4 thing on the side, the Bluetooth, it looks pretty sick. So that's how I'm gonna go ahead and mount it. Everything's already hooked up in the car. So let's go ahead and just put that piece back on, which I think should be fairly simple. And then we are ready to hook up our phone and set the map. And just like that, guys, everything's put back together, looking pretty damn clean. Let's go ahead and connect our Bluetooth device. Oh yes, don't forget to connect the battery. We are now in the car, I actually took a shower. Because I was honestly super sweating. It's like 108 degrees right now in California. I was dying. So just to give you guys the feedback on the install, when you look at all those wires, it looks kind of complicated. It's actually very easy. It takes about 30 to 45 minutes if you don't know what you're doing. You could possibly get it done in 20 to 30 minutes if you've taken apart this engine bay before. Like I've never taken apart this engine bay and it took me about roughly 45 minutes to do it. But it's actually very easy. Everything is very easy to do on this car, thankfully. So level of difficulty, if you have the tools, I would say a two out of 10. Only reason I say two is because there's those three screws that were unnecessary. Like, they, like why do you have three screws holding down a wiring harness? You only need one. But anyhow, that's not JB4's fault, that's BMW's fault. By the way guys, unlike other systems, this actually connects to CAN bus. So this allows you to read out the transmission system, engine and sensor data, and incorporate all of that to basically take advantage of the most amount of performance. Also FYI guys, the JB4 is compatible with flash maps for fine tuning, also logging, and additional safety systems. It can also be used for EA which is why we plugged it into the fuel rail and last but not least guys it has an auto clearing map that will adjust and optimize the tuning on a fly which is absolutely insane for any given octane mods or conditions anything at all all right guys let's go ahead and go to our bluetooth real quick i never used an android before i literally got this phone specifically for jb4 look at that it just pops up so let's click on jb4 all right guys i went ahead and connected the jb4 to the car so all i had to do is pretty much click connect I can go ahead and start logging. I'm on map one right now. And there's so many maps. Like if you go over here to settings, click on maps, you have like, oh, what the heck? I'm on stock, so I'm just gonna go with map one right now, which is super cool. What's also cool, you can go ahead and click recode. So if there's something wrong with your car, you just go ahead and click read codes. Look how quick it is too. Like reading codes, reading codes, but I mean, nope, no codes, perfect. So. This car is pretty flawless, I'm not gonna lie. Anywho, we're gonna go back to gauges. You can go ahead and adjust the gauges by just holding down on it and just choosing any gauge you want. Like if you want water temp gauge, click on that. Now you got your water temperatures. Hold it again. You can switch any gauge you want. I'm gonna click on ECU PSI, why not? I'm just gonna, I don't really know. I need to go ahead and make a whole nother video. I'm just trying to learn this stuff. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to become a pro, but this looks so sick. Like you feel like you're in a, look how dope this cockpit is right now. And it's Bluetooth. There's no wires connected to this thing, guys. It's literally Bluetooth connected. And what's super cool also, if you don't have the Bluetooth and you don't wanna connect your phone, you can also do crazy things with the gauges. Like, so if you guys don't wanna spend the $140 to get this wireless adapter, which I honestly think you definitely should. It makes life so much easier. Um, you can go ahead ahead and just go through which map you want and what settings you want. So, I'm at, so let me show you guys how you go through it. So if you hold the BC button right here, if you just go ahead and hold BC, you're gonna wait, yep, there we go. 
So, okay, I'm playing around with this gauge right now. And this gauge, I have pretty much like every every time you click, you move to another map. So all the info for this gauge is gonna be on this side of the screen and all the info for this gauge is gonna be on this side of the screen and when the time comes. But yeah, basically, if I go ahead and just keep looking BC, I can go ahead and adjust the settings and choose whatever map I want. And if I'm pretty much finished with that, all I have to do is hold the BC for three more seconds. Now I'm gonna be working on this gauge. And now on this gauge, you guys can see, I can literally choose the map from this side which is pretty crazy. So map one, I believe gives you an additional four PSI, which is pretty crazy. Then map two gives you six PSI and those two numbers are over stock. I'm gonna have, again, the whole list of everything on this side, but that's pretty much how you go through it. And then when you wanna get out of it, you just go ahead and hold BC again. And uh, it saves when the two errors go like that and pretty much you are back to normal. So when I currently put the car, I put the car on map zero. And as you guys can see over here, the car is on map zero. So if I go ahead and go back over here, I'm gonna hold down the BC button, wait for it to blink. Once it blinks, there you go. Now I don't wanna edit anything on this side. I'm gonna go ahead and hold it for three more seconds. Now that we're editing the map, I'm gonna go ahead and just click the BC button once. There we go, I'm in map one. I'm gonna go ahead and hold the BC button now. Bam, there you go, it saves, and then everything should just go down. And just like that, guys, we are in map one. Look over here, map one. So that's how you guys can adjust it from over here. I'm gonna have all the information to what these two gauges can do down below. And like I showed you guys, you guys can adjust the maps and your gauges and everything by just holding it down, going down to settings, choosing your maps, super cool. I love this, I love the gauges, super snappy too. I can click on logs real quick and also log my car and everything. It's just, I, this, is, this is pretty damn dope. And I love how you can check your codes at the same time. I'm actually gonna be hardwiring this. I wanna pretty much have a wire going just straight into the dash or something maybe into the vent to actually charge the phone so this thing is always on when i'm in my car i think that'll be super dope i'm gonna go ahead and take out for a spin on map one let's see if there's a difference at all because i'm not gonna lie this car stock is uh, kind of a disappointment all right car is starting up we are in map one let's just go ahead and back it up back it up now mm -mm -mm. all right let's get it oh buddy buddy you can already feel it which is kind of insane Oh my God, I like woke up the car. This is on map one, guys. Woo! Guys, I swear to God, this car was so boring. The thing is that's weird about the 535s, they're a lot slower than the 435 stock. It just doesn't make any sense. I think it's maybe it's such a big car. Let me go ahead and floor it real quick. Woo! Woo! Ho! Oh, guys, guys, nope. That, that is impressive. I'm gonna go ahead and click start logging and see what's gonna happen here. So, oh, so when you click start logging, the gauges actually kick into effect. So you guys can see the PSI, the boost. Oh, that's so sick. Guys, no way it has this feature.